LGBTQ plus people are as well fighting in the front lines as um, heterosexual people. Impossible de vous parler de la scène des musiques électroniques de Kiev sans aborder la question de la place de la communauté LGBT. J'ai rendez-vous avec Dimitri et ses amis. Ils organisent des soirées techno LGBT tous les mois à Kiev. Et ils vont nous parler de la place de la communauté gay en Ukraine dans cette période de guerre. Salut Dimitri. Salut. Enchanté. Salut. Enchanté. Marc. Je suis Dimitri et c'est Alex et Vlad. Et nous sommes en faire un parti, le nom Stashka, ici à l'Ukraine. Et tu parles un petit peu français Juste un peu. Tu as appris à l'école euh, À l'université. D'accord. Oui. On continue en anglais oh, Bien sûr. Ok. Yeah, we are setting up our party for next Saturday. This is a party that was started during the war, and like this is LGBTQ plus uh, party where we raise uh, money for military at the front lines. And uh, this party started like um, at the beginning of the war in June, when there's no no venues, and we started to gather as a small group of gay guys, and we were we had no uh, advertisement, no public uh, uh, public pages, and we started to gather our friends and their friends, they call their friends, and now we are like uh, more than thousand people each time. Uh, they are like place for self-expression, place where you have this confidence that you can relax and you will not get any judgment or anything but being who you are and you just really relax and be yourself and uh, be surrounded with people like who was like who understand what is social pressure is and you living with this feeling like for example for as I for 30 years right and then you go to this safer space and surround with these people with the same emotions that you have this and you know this vibe is incredible and this feeling is that you have this you see other people and like I know how you feel bro <laughs> so that's it it shows how strong and big this community and like how we stand together and we have this our common values and main purpose that we are dancing for freedom and raising money for the militaries in the front lines. Социум обвиняет нас в том, что нас бы всех на фронт. Только вот ошибочка. Мы уже там. Мы уже там есть. И не мало. И мы и не хуже, и не лучше других. How the situation uh, of gay people has changed uh, before and after the war? Well, yeah, before the war, like it was like more like similar situations we have in Slavic countries. Um, but uh, when the war started, like the focus of hate uh, just changed. Uh, we have like a uh, bigger enemy, uh, not internal but external, and uh, this is about the broad society, right? And regarding the LGBTQ community, they have like we as the people also have gained this bigger fear as of extern external uh, enemy. So this is why we have this less fear of being who you are, expressing yourself, and. Uh, uh, um, forcing acceptance from people who surround you. So, and like in um, less than a few years, I think we were we really 
persist a lot in terms of uh, diversity, acceptance and visibility of LGBTQ community and this like uh, um, this produces so fast that we didn't even expect this. So tout juste libéré l'URSS, l'Ukraine a légalisé l'homosexualité en 1991. Mais dans une société encore très rurale et conservatrice, baignée par une religion orthodoxe ouvertement hostile à l'identité homosexuelle, être gay en Ukraine a longtemps été très difficile. Les violentes attaques menées par des groupes d'extrême droite contre les gay pride organisés dans la capitale ont montré que l'évolution des mentalités était très lente sur ce sujet. Так сказать, моє переконання, що це є неправильно, що це є гріх і це може, можна так сказати, знищити нашу країну морально її сторону. En 2019, les organisations de défense des droits des LGBT en Ukraine ont rapporté 140 incidents de caractère homophobe allant de la simple menace à de graves agressions physiques. Before the war, um, we had much bigger and much stronger far right uh, community, uh, and like as an opposite, like we have uh, like um, the, the gay community, LGBTQ plus community, were much more separated from uh, society, and they were like in their own bubble. I really do like uh, how this vector evolves, and even though it's, it's a war. La communauté LGBT s'implique très fortement dans l'effort de guerre contre la Russie. L'Union des militaires LGBT a été créée en 2018 par Viktor Pilipenko, un homosexuel vétéran d'un bataillon de volontaires déployé dans le Donbass. Cette union LGBT s'engage pour l'égalité des droits dans la société et soutient les soldats et soldates gays qui combattent sur la ligne de front. C'est cette association qui reçoit les recettes des soirées Strichka organisées par Dimitri, Alex et Vlad. got to know that LGBTQ plus people are as well fighting in the front lines as um, heterosexual people. Because in the society there was um, always this kind of thought where gay people, um, why, why they are not in the front lines and now people see that they are fighting um, the same on the same level in the same lines as uh, heterosexual people. Mm -hmm. Ukrainians uh, right now uh, for sure understand uh, what is the vector uh, that they want to move um, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, building the society uh, they truly want and this is definitely towards democracy, towards democratic values, towards independence, freedom and it's uh, definitely opposite to the way uh, of our neighbors, so <laughs> that's why that's why I think it's also like a crucial thing that impacted the attitude towards the community because uh, people started uh, um, to know that like okay we don't want um, in Ukraine to have the same attitude and values that are in Russia, so we want to be opposite, yeah, yeah, to push the difference. Quand on pense à la guerre et à l'impact dramatique qu'elle a sur une société, on n'imagine pas forcément qu'elle puisse servir de tremplin pour de nouvelles idées. Pourtant, l'histoire nous a montré le contraire. Les droits des femmes ont par exemple énormément progressé en Europe lors des deux guerres mondiales, quand elles ont pu participer plus activement à la société, notamment par le travail, alors que les hommes étaient envoyés au front. C'est ce bouleversement provoqué par la guerre qui a permis l'évolution du rôle des genres et jeté les bases du mouvement pour les droits des femmes. La guerre peut devenir une opportunité de changement, d'évolution sociale. C'est aussi souvent un accélérateur pour l'art et la culture. 
So just before you told me you were collecting art just uh, since the beginning of the world? Yeah, it really gives like different perspective on what's going on and like it's through art you can take a look at the, uh, the same uh, problem that we have at a different angle. Yeah, and like even the war, when the war started like the art is would be the last thing you would buy right and like the what the painters did they just started to give the, their art as a donation so you just buy art, my my art and give all the money to the front line they have to adapt to this and like the painters that start to um, like rethink what's uh, the current uh, how the war is going on and like they started to like uh, they, it really changes the Ukrainian art the current uh, the uh, modern Ukrainian art and it was um, I like about it can you show me a little bit what what you bought we can, we can even start with the photography this is um, photography that I bought at the beginning of the war on the auction that was raising uh, money for military. And this is the uh, mosaic panneau from um, Mariupol, um, Mariupol uh, uh, bus station. This picture was made before the war, but this place is not existing anymore because this city the hall is, is just um, managed. Other work is um, it's called Fighters. It's by uh, Maria Pletsko. It's different, uh, very interesting technique because it was like printed by the stone. The stone is printed, uh, it's carved in the stone and printed, and there's only three pieces of it. And this is uh, work from my friend uh, Katya Zavgorodnya, and it has very interesting interesting technique that it's a dot work so it's like every dot you have to put in by your hand and it's like very long and meditative technique and uh, it takes a lot of time to work on this uh, and to create even this such small image and it also gives you this inner feeling of peace because to finish this work you need to constantly put dots but be very precise and like this work is filled with peace and calm and this is what I like about it.